you trying to build? Like, why would you say that out loud? And tell the person that you're paying for something. You say, yeah, it's a thing. Like, how, how dumb are you? Are you talking about people on Facebook? I know, but it's, it's, it's like, like the texture of it. Yeah, but it's like um, the lady who's gonna take it. You can get changed for it. This was a uh, she was trying to get changed for sprouts. Oh, sprouts. She goes, yeah, it's a baby. All right, guys. So today we're gonna learn our first formulas and see our first. Greek letters and all kind of stuff. Yay! Yeah. Sigma, sigma. Sigma, 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 yes. Um, so, tell me in English how to figure out the, the average or what we're going to call the mean <coughs> of a set of data. So if I had a list of data, there you go. So add them all up. Divided by the number of data values. All right, so you all know how to calculate the average. Formulas are necessary to give quick instruction about how to calculate something. This is relatively simple and there's not a lot of words so you can argue you don't really need a formula here. The nice thing about this is it's a nice kind of step into what the symbols mean. So when you start getting more complicated ideas where if I said it in English it would take a whole page, I'd rather just have a formula that explains how to do it. right? Um, so what this really is, it truly is a different language, especially not just because we're using Greek letters, but we're using symbols to represent phrases. That's what a lot of math is, and that's why math is difficult, because it's really hard to learn a language later in life. That's why I wish they started teaching us some algebra stuff way earlier in school, just like languages. If you learn it in first grade, you'll pick it up so much easier. Um, so in mathish, Uh, let me let me let me distinguish this. So the sample mean, <coughs> we give the sample mean this notation, x bar. Because what we, what do you think? If I had a list of data, uh, how can I represent all the data points at once? Well, with the variable, with x, because that's what x means. It means it has multiple values that it could represent, right? So that's I would use the letter x. So a bar on top of it means that's the average of that, those values. So the sample mean is x bar. That's how you read this. And the formula is this. Um, now real quick, uh, I don't think, they did. Super Bowl 50 was the first Super Bowl. Some of you guys are like, what the shit, he went to Super Bowl? Super Bowl 50 is the first Super Bowl that they... Uh, did not use Roman numerals for because it would have just been an L dropping. Boom, you know, like Super Bowl 48, they had XX, you know, it's like bam, you know, and there's all like the graphics were all, uh, you know what I'm saying? Just to make it like, you know, uh, Super Bowl 50, it like, L, boop. It wouldn't have quite, oh, it's nice. No, uh, so. We like using other languages to represent things, so they're uh, either to make it seem more like, uh, or just so it doesn't get confused with some other things. So, so add them all up. What's the more formal name for addition? Uh, um, Sum. Uh, and that starts with the letter S, so then they went, let's use Greek. Why not? Roman is for football. Let's use Greek. Uh, let's use the letter S, the capital letter S, to mean sum. And the capital letter S is sigma. And that looks like this. Now, now, to be honest, writing that down hurt me a little bit because it doesn't mean shit unless there's something after it. Somebody came up to you and said, I need you to sum up. 
So right now, in my, I'm kind of, I feel that way right now. I'm like, somewhat. So if I said, okay, do this problem for me. What problem, Jeff? When am I supposed to take the screw up? Okay, so sum up what? Add them all up, and what, what symbol do we use to represent all the data points, all the data values? X. Add them all up, so that's what that means. That's the mathish way of saying add them all up. So you say that in the mathish language, right? Now what's, what's, uh, what's, what letter, we decided to go back to our letters for this for some reason. What letter do you think we're gonna use for the number of, yeah, yeah, oh, it's amazing. So N pretty much is always gonna mean the sample size, the number of things in your sample. <coughs> okay, so let's take a quick second here. I wanna show you a little example here. Uh, so what would the sum of X be for this example? Yeah, if you add all these up, right, so that'd be 25. How do you think, all right, how do you think you would get this? Is that 25 squared? Yeah, what does this tell you to do? I have to add up what, and this is what I always tell people. If you have a formula that has this symbol in it, you cover it and you see what you need to figure out first. I can't add up my X squares until I know what the hell my X squares are. So what am I going to do? Now you can see why I had this here. So I'm going to make a list of x squares. And then I add those up. What's that? I like this. Say again, sorry? Ah, now well, if I wanted to do 25 times 25, that I would be squaring what? I would be squaring this. That would be this. See the difference? That would be 25 times 25. 625. Oh, shit, that's related to this old evil thing from algebra. It's not even it's not the teacher's fault for uh, the difference between these two things here. These two things are not the same. Because one is only squaring two. So that is two squared with a negative on it. So of course that's what? Negative four. Negative four. Two squared is four. Now put a negative on it. That's all it's saying. That's negative one. Now what's this? This is what am I squaring here? What do I have two up here? Two negative twos. So that's negative two times negative two, which is positive four. So that's why... This would be the problem, and a student would come up to me and say, my calculator says the answer is negative four. Do I need new batteries? And no, it's because they put it in like this. So of course the calculator would say it's negative four, because that's what the hell that is. They just put it in wrong. And why am I spending all this time on this? Because there will be formulas that have stuff like this in it. So what if, I, what if a formula said this? Let me just go this further with this. Okay. What if a formula said <laughs> with the same list of data? <laughs> Let's do it again. I need a column of those. Now, now I want to really quickly eliminate something. You cannot plug something in that and get the answer. Because how many things does this represent? Four things. So there's not a thing to put in there. So for each of these, you can figure out what x minus 2 squared is. So I can do, if I need to, I can do x minus 2 and then x minus 2 squared. So what's, what's uh, how is that? Zero. One. Are you guys with me? I can build. I have to first figure out what are all the things I'm supposed to add up. And then I can add them up. So that's zero, one, seven. 9, 0, 1, 49, 81. So the sum of x minus 2 squared would be? 131. 131. All right. 
Is this going to be immediately an issue? No. But since we're talking about that summation symbol, I want you to start putting this in your brain. This is how this works when I see it in a formula. So first get a list of whatever comes after it. Once I get a list of those, I can then add them up. Yes? How do you guys want that one? Uh, 1 and 49 is 50 plus 81 is 131. You add these up, right? Mm -hmm. 1 and 49 is 50 plus 81 is 131. I don't know how else to say that. I'm sorry. But if you add these numbers up, you get 131. Is that cool? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. You just aren't giving me any reaction. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, I gotta keep going until I get something. Yes? Oh. So I just, you don't have to do this, but that was like a little intermediate step. What I have to square, x minus 2, so I figured that out first. You know, so that's an option you could do piece by piece. <coughs> I'll show you how to do it in the lists. Hopefully it makes sense. If I put this in L1, I can then define L2 to be L1 minus 2. And then I can define L3 to be L2 squared. If I got a long ass list of data, I want the freaking calculator that costs a lot of money to do that shit for me. Right? Okay, I like, it. I like it. this ain't math 88 bullshit. I need the calculator to do this for me. Yes? X minus 3 squared. How'd you get that? X minus 2 squared? Yes. How'd I get what? <laughs> This would be a question that's being asked. This is not something you come up with by yourself. I like it. Yes? But you're going to give out the x's, though, yeah? I have to. Yes, yes. Or else there's nothing to work with. Yes. I like it. Cool. Okay, okay. Um, so so it's, it's really related to this idea of how to calculate the mean. I have to give you data values to work with to calculate the mean. This might be sitting in a formula somewhere to calculate something else. And there will be a lot of something else's to calculate. Okay, okay. You all like, holy shit, all we're talking about right now is mean, and man, this guy's making it really confusing. But are you all cool? I went on a little tangent there just to talk about summation symbol, how it's going to show up. All we've learned really so far is that's what that looks like in math, is how to calculate the mean. Now, I put sample mean here for a reason, and this is also what was in my head earlier when I was doing a whole football thing. Um, so it's just a sample. So we use our letters for the little sample. If it's a population, we want it to be more like, you know, yeah. So we use, instead of x bar, if it's a population mean, we use, you ready for this? You guys are going to write a little m, but it's a u with an extra leg. It's a u with an extra leg in front. But you can argue that looks like an m, and it's really, what's Mew. Yes, I like it. Okay. French cow, right? Mew. Okay. A very tiny <coughs> French cow. Mew. So this is the Greek letter mu. The formula is the same. The book makes the stupid N capital for some damn reason, but it's still just the number of things I'm looking at. So if I use this symbol, that means I have a population I'm working with. If I use that symbol, that means I have a sample that I'm working with. Okay, how are we all doing so far? Oh, yes. So the only difference between these two formulas is the symbol used to represent this, the idea. They're both means, they're both calculated the same way you would calculate a mean. It's just different symbols to represent. Is it a sample or is it a population? Hopefully it makes sense why we have to do that. That is huge. If I'm only working with a sample, I'm not sure. If I'm working with a population, I am sure. So I need a quick way to tell people that. Okay. Is everybody decent so far? Again, all you've done really so far is the average, and you came in knowing it, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Same formula for both, or for all three, basically. Uh, say again. Sorry. The same formula for the same for the population. Yep. Same formula. Just, Just a different symbol. And again, the book I think uses a capital N, like it's the population size. Who cares? It's just freaking N. Okay, okay. Um, now, I don't know if you guys ever hear like news about like house prices, uh, especially in this area, or like La Jolla, or uh, what they don't use the average, they don't use the mean. 
what do they use? There's something else. It's called the median. Because, for example, if, uh, if I was going to work at this company, let's pretend like the company has four employees currently, and they're going to hire a fifth one. They're going to hire me, possibly. And I asked some people there, I'm like, well, how much money can I expect to make? And let's say the situation is one guy makes 38000 a year, the next guy makes 41000 a year, this other guy makes 47000 a year, and the CEO makes 450000 a year. So if I come in there, I'm like, how much money can I expect to make here? And they tell me the average. Somebody help me out. What's the average value? And this is the population of that company, so we'll use mu. <laughs> One forty-four. Oh, that's so awesome! Exactly. Uh, yeah, I meant to do that. One hundred forty-four thousand dollars, right? If I tell them, oh, the average is one hundred forty-four thousand. Does that really answer that person's question? My question: How much can I expect to make? I can't expect to make one hundred forty-four freaking thousand. Or how much can I expect to pay for a house? If you tell somebody the average house price, you're gonna freak them the shit out. In fact, the median freaks most people the shit out. But. So what is this median? The median, and the symbol for the median is X with a broken little bar on it, X tilde. That's the median. The median is purely the number that's in the middle when the data points are in order. So the mean sort of gives me an idea of middle. Why is the mean not really the middle up here truly? Because one of my data values is, is an outlier. It's pulling it way up in that direction. I like it. So these are all ways of trying to measure where the center is. So sometimes a mean can't be trusted if there's outliers in my data. Then I might use the median. So where's somebody else? Uh, well, let's see. I think I already gave you the two big ones. House prices, you see median all the time. Income. You can see median. So it just depends on if there's outliers in your data, whether you're not using the median or the mean. Uh, so what would the now what's wrong with me? Yes, yes. What's wrong with you? And you're like, I don't have time to psychoanalyze you. I mean, I'll get there in a second. I love it. Okay, okay. Let me get there. That's exactly where I was about to go. Uh, if there were five numbers, then obviously that okay, let me do that. There's a middle number. There's no question. If there are four numbers, numbers shit. So the number that's between the two in the middle would be the number that's in the middle of everything, right? That's like middle, middle. That is so freaking middle. Not meta, middle. So what's in between these two? Yeah, 44, right? So the median of this would be 44. Now, if I told that, if, I, if they told me you can expect around 44,000, that's honest, isn't it? Around 44,000. It's a lot better than telling somebody you expect around 144,000. No, you can't. <laughs> All right. How are we doing so far? That's that's the median. Say again. So what numbers in the middle of all these numbers would be the number that's in the middle of the two numbers in the middle? Oh, shit. Let me say that again. The number in the middle of the two in the middle is definitely in the middle of everything. There's just no way it can't be. It's in the middle of the middle. If there were an odd number of numbers, it's just the number in the middle. Even number of numbers, you have to average the two in the middle. And what's being assumed with everything I just said, the data values better be in order, or else I can just make the median anything I want it to be. Yes? Is there an actual formula written out to watch your life from Sort of. Uh, what is like X sub N over 2? There's a little formula. Let me show it to you, because the book shows it to you. Um, it's a two-step process, and it actually makes more sense once I talk about percentiles. But I'll go ahead and throw this up here. I would only do this if I have a really long ass list of data points and I don't want to like count in. With me? Mm -hmm. So, two step process. One, you calculate um, n plus one divided by two. <coughs> so, what's four plus one divided by two? 
So 2.5, that would be, what's the 2.5th number? The number that's between the second and third. Say again? Oh, uh, again, so how many, what's n? Four. So four plus one divided by two. Oh, yeah. And the 2.5th number, so that's, the first step would be, where is the answer? Is that the 2.5th number? And you're all like, 2.5th number, what the hell? But does that make sense now what it means? It's the number between the second and third. So if I had five data points, it would have been five plus one divided by two is three. The third number, well shit, yeah, that's the middle number. <coughs> yes. All right, so do you regularly have to do this? No, it really is just if you have a long ass list, of, if you had 87 data points, you're like, okay, 87 plus 188 divided by two, the 44th number is the right answer, there you go. I don't have to do this kind of thing. Uh, 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 oh shit, I'm going to go crazy. Okay. Yes, n plus one divided by two. Yep. And then step two would be go get this two and a half number, which is the work we did up here. The two and a half number is the number between the second and third number. Okay. Uh, okay, so we got mean okay. and median. <laughs> and the second step of that is just finding that number? Yes. So how would you find that number? For example, to use it in R, there's four numbers. Yeah, what's in between the second and third number? 44. Yeah. Yep. You added up number one. Uh, what's 41 plus 47? 88 divided by 2? 44. Because how do you find the number between any two numbers? Add them up, divide by 2. You find the average. <laughs> or another way is they're 6 apart, divided by 2 is 3, so 3 plus 41 is 44. It's got to be halfway in the middle. There's a lot of different ways of finding the middle of two numbers. Like if it was 49 and 41. You take 3 and 4, this is going to if this was 39 and 41, yeah. then 40 would be in the middle of this. What's in the middle of 39 and 41? Uh, no, like 39 and 42. Sure, okay. 39 and 42. So if this was 39 and this was 42, add them up, divide by 2. Yes, it will be the median. Yes. So anytime you have an even number of numbers, the median is in the middle of the two in the middle. So it's the average of the two in the middle. So Does an average always come out to be a whole number? No. It just comes out to be whatever the hell it is. If you have an odd number of numbers, the median is the number in the middle. There will be a number in the middle. Yes? 5.5. 5.5. Two point five. Yes, because yes, please, dear God, that is a two. I know I write bad, but that is not a five, is it? Okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was just worried. I'm like, am I? Is my vision going the same amount as my writing, and I'm the only one that can read it? Okay. So, one thing about this is. These two things, they only work with what kind of data? Numerical. Yeah, truly numerical. They only work with quantitative data. All right now, they work for populations and samples. This symbol doesn't change, to be honest, for if it's a population or a sample. They only work with quantitative data. So my data might not be quantitative, and I still want to get a feel for where the middle is. It sounds kind of weird, but I'll show you an example. So there's another form of center called the mode. And the mode is just the thing that occurs the most. So if I uh, took everybody's name and I saw that there were three people named Jeff, that would be, and, that was, and nobody else had, the, there was only two or one of everything else, then Jeff would be the mode. 
So it works, so the mode is the only form of center that works with qualitative data. Now, does it work with numerical data? Well, hell yeah, right? So, so let's work with numerical data. That's what we're going to work with the most. Um, is there a symbol for the most? No, actually, no. In one semester, we made a symbol up. I think I just made it capital M or something. But, um, so the mode is just the number or thing occurring the most. My God. So for example, if I had uh, 14, 15, 15, 16, what's the mode? 15. 15. 15. It's amazing. If I had 7, 7, uh, 41, 42, 42, Forty-one is like the anti-mode. Yeah, this is bimodal. There's two modes. Yeah, bimodal. Don't judge. So bimodal. Seven forty-two. This book goes to trimodal, but thank God they stopped. After that, we're like, all right, screw it. There's no freaking mode. The mode is trying to figure out where things seem to be clustering. That's what the mode tries to do. So there's different ideas of how to get the middle of a set of data. So what about if I had um, 8, 8, 8, 8, 9, 9, 9, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. 11. 11, they got me. There's a clear winner here, right? 11. 11. So don't just put 8, 9, 11 because they all have repeats. The mode is the thing that occurs the most. There's no tie. 11-1. <laughs> I like the way you said it. 11. Not too bad, right? Mean, median, mode. So again, uh, let me see how to say this. Number one, it's because it only works with, it's the only one that works with qualitative data. So it's like the type of car that most people seem to be driving if I'm taking a list of all the cars in the parking lot. Right? So, um, but even for numerical data, it's important to calculate the mode because it kind of gives you an idea of where things are clustering. And, and we'll see, if I make a histogram, I can then talk about something known as the modal class. That graph is flicking us off, but we'll get past it. It's also got six fingers, but we'll get past it. What's the modal class? Well, this one. That's the one that has the things that occur the most. So you can talk about modal class. You could have bimodal classes. And same idea. How are we doing so far? Is that? So you can take the mode of like, the class, like, you spread out the information and then take another mode. Exactly. Because it could be absolutely zero repeats in my data, but if I make a histogram of it, I can see where the data seems to be clustering. And that's still the same idea as the mode, the thing that has the most occurring in it. Okay, I like it. I like it. Uh, I think the book does not use this next idea, but I do, so too bad. Um, did I skip over that? I think I did. And that is the mid-range. Where is this stuff at? Oh, it must be in two. All right, I'll find it later. Uh, and the mid-range is just, what, what's that sound like, the mid-range? Yeah, what's the range? High minus low. So the range is a number, right? It's the high minus low. The mid-range is the number in the middle of those. And how do I find the middle of any two numbers? Add them up, 
divided by 2. So that's what sucks about this formula is it's got the range kind of things in it, but it's a plus because I'm getting the average. So the mid-range would be high plus low divided by 2. I like it. Yes. Just to make sure, range is the lowest number you have and the highest number you have, and all in between. But that's your range. The range is just high minus low. It's a number. Yeah. So what would the range of this data be? <laughs> Two. What would the mid range be? Fifteen. Fifteen. I like. Okay. Definitely not. Never, no, 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 because the range is not an average. It's just how, how spread out your data seems to be, right? From what to what does your data go? That number tells me kind of like the, the f overall spread of the data. Yeah. All right. Good time. Do you guys want a, another break? You keep, let's, let's go a little bit more, and then we'll take another break. Okay? Um, oh, let's see. Yeah, let me talk about... We kind of lay some groundwork for percentiles. I think what I did was I went, anyway, it doesn't matter. I kind of skipped over percentiles and I'm coming back to um, Percentiles, that's a good job. Any of you guys taking the SAT yet? Anybody? Yeah. When you get your results, don't they still give it to you as a percentile? No? Did you just give you the number? Shoot. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, has anybody height, ever seen... Your weight are percentiles, right? Yes. Uh, if you have kids, anybody have kids? Very often you take them to the doctor and they tell you what percentile they are in for their weight and their height. And they have a chart that kind of goes like this. All right? And you can see if it's up there on the height, he's a really tall kid. Down here on the weight, skinny little thing. Right? Okay. Anyway, so what the hell is a percentile? If you took a test and you were in the 90th percentile, that does not mean you made a 90 on the test. You could have made a 47 on the test. If you ever had a test where you made like an F, but you got the highest grade or, or something like that. If you ever, if you go to grad school, that will happen. I remember my first class in grad school, I got like a 21 out of uh, 50 got a 42 when he gave it back to me. And as he handed it back, I'm like, oh, shit. And he says, good job, Jeff. I'm like, what the fuck? What? He's like, yeah, you know, I, I just made it really hard. I'm like, that's just the way it is. They just give you all kinds of shit just to see what you're going to do. And then they curve the hell out of the grades at the end. Anyway. Um, so percentile, if you're in the 90th percentile, that means that you scored higher than 90% of everybody else. That's what that means. Doesn't mean you made a 90. It means you scored higher than 90% of everybody else. So, and what's the symbol for the 90th percentile? Because that's a lot of letters I just wrote. We use this symbol, P90. There it is. All right, I always wait for that to be set somewhere. <laughs> P90X. You'll get tired 90% faster. All right. Uh, so, let me ask you this. Let's do this. Uh, percentiles don't make perfect sense unless you have a very large set of data. But I'm going to use a small set of data just to get a feel for how they work. Right? Um, you'll see why the first statement I said is true. Um, so here's an example of a set of data. Uh, 11. I'm going to go ahead and put it in order, by the way, because obviously this has to be in order. You don't just put your 30 grade and, and put it over there and say, I'm in the 90th percent. No. Sorry. Right? Uh, so 11, 15, 17, 28, 39, 38, 39, 39. What is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 10, 10. Uh, uh, 45, 47. I like that. <coughs> Okay, so 10 data points. It's going to make it easier to talk about this. What number do you think is the 90th percentile? 5. All right. 
All right, I get some people saying 45, I get some people saying 47. Now remember, people saying 45, you're saying that because it's the ninth number. But why is it not 45? Because how much is below it? 80%. Oops. So 47 then, how much do you have below it? 90%, but how much is above it? Zero. Shit. And the 90th percentile should have 90% below it, so therefore it should have... 10% above it. Oh, shit, that sounds a lot like the median. If you think about it, I'm going to have to be in the middle of those two numbers. What's another? What's the percentile for the median? The median is going how far into the list of data? How far in do I go for the median? Halfway, 50%. So the median is the 50th percentile. P50 is X tilde, right? They're the same thing. That's a weird P, but all. Now, so P90 in this case is not 45. It's not 47. It's in the middle of those. Yes, 46. Just like the median is not the second number out of four. That's half of four is two. What's wrong with that, Jeff? I actually have to go in between the second and third. So that gives me a, a process to use. This is going to be a two-step process, a lot like the median. Bless you. Stay with me. I see some of you guys are like, we're going to take a break in a minute because I'm losing. You're like, oh. Um, okay, take that away. So step one, I take 90% of how long my list is. Yeah, there's 10 numbers. So 90% is what as a number? 0.9. There you go. Of means multiply. I love it. Fewer and fewer people, fewer, fewer and fewer people know that. Makes me crazy. Of means multiply. What's one third of nine? It's one third times nine. What's 28% of 17? It's 0.28 times 17. That's what of means. I don't know why high schools aren't teaching that shit anymore. Or even below that. And what's n? 10? 0.9 times 10 is? 9. All right, all right. Stay with me. If your answer to this first step, you're going to love this shit. There's only two of these situations. If the answer is a whole number, you average that one with the next one. So the answer isn't 9. It's the average of the ninth and the 10th. So what do we end up with the course? 46. Yeah, 45 and 47. I get 46. That's P90 in this case. Bang. So I'm going to do P35. <laughs> what do I do for P35? I don't know if you can even see all that on this. Poor people at home. Yeah, so P35. Step one would be 35% of 10. So 0.35 times 10 is what? 3.5. You just move the decimal place. Now, now, is that a whole number? No. No. If it's not a whole number... You round up, and that's where the answer is. So even if I would have gotten 3.1, I would have rounded up to 4. So if it's a whole number, what do you do? You average that one with the next one. If it's anything else, you round up and take that number. So I would round this up to 4. The fourth number is the answer. What's the fourth number? 28. Do you ever write that round down to it? No. What is 3.1? What is what? So if this would have been 3.1, I would have rounded up to a fourth number. Because what do you do if it's 3? You average the third and the fourth. 
So anything more than three pushes it to the fourth number being the answer. Yes? Oh, because uh, you average the ninth and tenth numbers. The ninth number is 45, the tenth number is 47. When you do this, you get 46. That's right in between 45 and 47. P50, and then we'll take a break. P50, we now know, is also the median. But let's analyze this the way we just learned how. The first step would be 50% of 10. Well, it's 50% of 10. Five. What's that mean? I got a whole number. Average, Average the two in the middle. One, two, three, four, five. Thirty-three. Thirty-three point five. So it'd be twenty-nine plus thirty-eight divided by two. That's not the way I do it, by the way, but all uh, forty-three point five. That is, uh, did I, what did I put, 43.5? What am I doing? 33.5. Is that why you guys are looking at that weird? I don't blame you. So it's right in the middle. That's exactly what we would have gotten before this. Ten numbers, where's the average? The number in the middle of the two in the middle, that's the average of those. That's exactly what we just did. All right, let's take a break. Let's uh, go back at 11.30. Give you a little bit longer. 18 minutes.